So how do you know what the best channel to broadcast your wireless signal from happens to be? Because you can set it automatically or you can choose one manually. So auto is usually the best because then the device is going to pick based on throughput and number of retried packets. But the picking one manually comes into play when you're doing things where you know that there's something that happens every so often. Like I used to have a network that you'd turn on the microwave and the network would go down. And if I picked a channel that was at the, I think in that particular case, it was at the bottom of the spectrum. You know you're not supposed happen. to keep your um, router in the microwave, right? Yes. Okay. Was just it anywhere second. near the microwave or was it just close enough? Uh, I think it had more to do with the fact that the microwave messed with the power and so then the radio worked better at the thing. It wasn't like the microwave was interfering. It was that the power browned or there was noise on the line. Isn't uh, it also operating uh, in the same spectrum? Like a yes, 2.4 gigahertz is a microwave spectrum. So you can cook food with your uh, radio signals. So does that mean I shouldn't stand above uh, my access point when the, packets the, are flying through? Don't that, sit on it. Well, okay. that was the big <laughs> European law that they were just talking about passing like two months ago, was whether or not they were going to ban Wi-Fi in schools because of the radiation on the children. Wow. Okay, so set it automatic if you can, but if you can't set it automatically, because when I set up the WDS network, uh, I can't. See, I can't see an automatic option yeah. anymore. Yeah. So, so norm it in. So normally, your house is big enough that it doesn't probably matter which channel you pick. But in an apartment complex, it seems to be two, six, and eleven are the big ones that come auto set from either the two wire that Comcast does. The Cisco slash Linksys brands tend to be eleven or six, depending on how Quest old they has, are. Quest has six, I think, usually. Yeah. So would I then... Oh, wait, CenturyLink. My, mm -hmm. Pardon me, CenturyLink, so this is not already a dated video. <laughs> Could I uh, go through and manually check each particular channel and then yeah. judge somehow so which is the best? The thing you probably care about the most is your internet speed. Now, yeah. you and I are spoiled. We have like 40 plus megabits of bandwidth, and a typical wireless network's good for 54 to 85, despite that 80, 300 rating that a lot of them have. So if you can run a speed test and say, oh yes, I'm getting eight on this eight megabits on this channel and 16 on this channel and 40 on this channel, it'll be pretty obvious. If we were looking at your DSL connection with 768K, right. who knows whether we'd be able to, well, that's to one do a, the, yeah, no, a that, test. That's pretty much on its own. Right. right. There is no wireless well, there. Well, but I mean, what his point is at 768K, there's not a whole lot to optimize for, right. whereas you could actually be getting a significant signal drop that is noticeable across a, a much bigger pipe. Yeah. Do you recommend any kind of software other than the, the remote services? Well, if you, have a, if you have another computer that you can do a network share to, you can just pick some big movie file or your temp file or your swap file and say, I'm going to copy it over and time how long it takes, and that's a good, good benchmark. Good benchmark, because that's going to be local traffic. But any one of the um, like network sniffing tools that lets you know what channels things are operating on uh, are a good choice for figuring out, is there a channel with a whole lot of noise in my neighborhood? 